Sure. Exposes disease mechanism. Okay. Hi. So this works um, aimed to identify microRNA gene associations that can act as a prognostic biomarker in cancer. So you probably all know that microRNAs are small endogenous non-coding uh, RNA molecules that control gene expression by inhibiting translation or inducing cleavage of target mRNA. And the role of microRNAs as key regulators of a wide uh, variety of cellular fundamental processes, such as apoptosis, differentiation, proliferation, and cell cycle, is well established in almost all aspects of biology and bio biomedicine. So GBM is the most common aggressive and malignant tumor of the brain and is uh, associated with one of the worst five-year survival rates among all human cancers. And one of the most comprehensive data set um, today, uh, effort at molecular characterization of cancer in general and uh, GBM in particular is the Cancer Genome Atlas. So here by um, studying microRNA expression, gene expression, clinical data, and uh, whole, exome, whole genome sequencing for a subset of patients, and by uh, applying feature selection algorithm on the mere gene co-expression behavior, we were able to stratify the patients into two groups. One showing a valid association between the mirror and the gene, and the other showing no such association. So our research hypothesis was that a specific regulation of gene by microRNA is prone to change with the accumulation of genomic aberrations. And this might lead to a specific association between genes and microRNA being overlooked by conventional analysis, meaning that we can overlook uh, pairs that the only way to uncover is by searching for subgroups instead of looking at, at the whole data set. So we started with uh, 23,000 genes and 1,500 uh, microRNAs, and by using iteratively feature selection algorithm, uh, we divided the patients into two groups, uh, meaning for a mere gene pair to be considered relevant, it had to be uh, significantly correlated in one group and insignificant or opposite uh, at the other. We then applied the kaplan mare survival analysis on the group that emerged from the, this pipeline in order to include only pairs that had any association with survival. So overall, we had uh, 7,500 microRNAs, uh, mere gene pairs, that also associated with uh, patients' prognosis. Now, this kind of analysis required uh, for adjustment for multiple hypotheses. So for this end, we used a uh, Bonforoni correction on the entire uh, set of p-values that we received, which led us to include only 26 pairs. Um, the next uh, filtering step was to filter all pairs with any meaningful association uh, for one of the components, meaning if we have a mere gene pair that one of the component by itself, either the mere or the gene, could be associated with prognosis, then the association that we see uh, based on the pair could uh, be based on this specific component and not on the pair. So we exclude all pairs with any meaningful association. And the last filtration was to include pairs that have a predicted binding site. So we used here a mi record, which is a tool that summarizes a predicted target from 11 different uh, prediction tools. Um, and this extensive uh, filtration led us to include only 16 pairs. So we started with 7,500 pairs and ended up with 16, and this is the list uh, that we identified, and you can see the corresponding uh, kaplan mare p-values. So the most significant one is uh, MAF and microRNA 330, uh, which we now follow for some of the biological insight. So this method identified that a strong negative correlation between uh, MAF and the MIR with an R-score of minus 0.82 is also associated with significantly lower survival rates, while a lack of correlation associated with higher survival rates. So this mere gene correlation associated with a more violent form of the tumor. Okay, so the next step was to see if we can find any um, mutations that could explain this behavior. So the first, we analyzed 19 whole um, genome sequencing that were available at the time and 11 tagged as group one and eight uh, tagged as group two. So we first set up to identify any somatic mutations in the uh, gene coding regime that could explain this um, uh, regulation, lack of regulation that we see. 
but no such mutations could be found. Nevertheless, we identified a known SNP in the microRNA promoter gene that was present uh, in all patients from group two, meaning 11 patients from group two, and was absent from the patients, uh, sorry, in group one, and was absent from the patients in group two. So here we wanted to see if this uh, specific SNP had any impact on the uh, microRNA, ex microRNA expression levels. So the first graph here shows the uh, microRNA expression distribution between uh, the two groups, and we can see that the distribution is quite similar, practically the same. So the mutation has no effect on the expression of the microRNA. In addition, no change in the gene expression levels was, uh, were also find, found. So we have a, a set of patients with the same distribution of microRNA and gene expression, but still we see that those patients could be divided into two groups based on their correlation. We have one group with significant negative correlation and the other with no such uh, correlation. Okay, so often molecular markers are in fact uh, the cause of subclinical states. So to avoid such bias in our analysis, um, we set up to confirm that the stratification we see here is in fact based on our method and, not, and is not based on any clinical feature. So here we can see the distribution of uh, six clinical features that were available for GBM patients. Uh, again, the blue one is group one and green is group two, and we can see that this, the, the distribution um, is practically the same. So the results we see here is not a consequence of any uh, clinical state. Okay, so over the past few years, robustness uh, proved to be a highly important feature in any uh, computational analysis, and their results are significantly stronger when they are supported by additional set. So while the TCGA is the only data set today that contains uh, gene expression clinical data and microRNA expression for GBM patients, other data sets do provide similar data for breast cancer data set sets. So here we used um, two data sets from the gene expression omnibus uh, that do contain this uh, gene expression clinical data and microRNA expression. And after applying uh, the filtration step and pipeline I described here, we ended up with 15 pairs for the first data set and six pairs for the second. Uh, overall, we had four pairs that overlapped between those uh, two data sets, and here is the list. Uh, with the corresponding uh, capital merit p values in both sets. So again, the most significant one uh, is EGR1 and microRNA377. In this case, we saw that a significant negative correlation between the gene and the mirror uh, consistently and robustly associated with higher survival rates in both data set. And um, a positive correlation was associated with lower survival rates. So, EGR1 was found to be upregulated in a variety of cancers, including breast cancer, and it was also been linked with uh, proliferation, uh, migration, drug resistance, and so on and so forth. So this may explain the behavior we see here. Okay, so our feature selection algorithm starts by randomly choosing three patients and then iterates across all patients in order to stratify patients by their mere gene uh, correlation status and two, in order to evaluate the effect of these groups on patient survival. So one might say that if we had chosen a different three patient uh, sample set, then the final result would be different. So to test uh, this uh, question, we randomly chose uh, 1,000 pairs of mere gene and calculated the entire set of three possible combinations to start from. So for a data set of 373 patients, we have overall 51.5 combinations that we can start from. And this is in fact what we did. Here we can see the results. So the graph presented here have uh, 1,000 data points for each uh, uh, mirror pair that we uh, randomly chose. And the um, x-axis represents the average p-values, meaning that every data point here represents an average of 51.5 p-values that we received and the y-axis represents the standard deviation. So we can see, first of all, that the standard deviation is amazingly low, and in addition, the 16 uh, original uh, pairs that we identified in the GBN dataset are all here in the black box, 
So this tells us that the uh, initial three sample set that we uh, chose has no effect on the final results and that the 16 pairs that were identified as uh, significant would still be identified if we have, shown, uh, if we have chosen a different uh, three sample set to start from. Okay, so to summarize this work, uh, I've just presented a new way of looking at uh, mirror gene correlation by searching for hidden or subgroups of, uh, uh, of correlation uh, between uh, those patients. And in addition, by identifying subgroups of correlation and by um, affiliating them with disease outcome or any other uh, phenotype you choose, uh, you may uncover underlying uh, mechanisms uh, that might be the key for uh, a disease progression and so on. So thank you so much. I would like to thank my advisor, Dr. Solifoni, and to Dr. Liran Carmel, who helped us a lot with the statistical analysis here, and of course, to the NSF for providing this generous uh, travel funding for me to come here. So thank you all for listening. Um, I think it's really uh, cool, cool work that you presented. I was wondering of the 26 uh, significant associations, there were nine that you threw out because they weren't meaningful, and then there's an additional that you didn't, didn't find a target. So I have two questions. So, um, one is uh, the ones that were not meaningful or didn't have a target. I guess the, the, the 10 that you threw out. Um, the nine, the first, the 26 pairs were the pairs that uh, uh, survived the uh, Bonferroni correction. Right. It had a meaningful p-value. Yeah. And then we threw out all pairs with any meaningful association. The meaningful association part is when we looked for pairs that the correlation status, meaning that we have one group with significant correlation and the other with no significant correlation, mm -hmm. right? So that these groups can also be associated with patient uh, prognosis. If we have one component, meaning the mere or the gene that by themselves certify patient ah. prognosis, then it would be based on this specific component and not on the pair. Okay, so there's only really one that I'm asking about then. So I was going to ask for this one that you that didn't have a predicted finding yeah. site. Mm -hmm. um, because this is GBM, you can look in some of the clip data that comes from brain, from like the Darnell lab. I mean, you mm -hmm. can see if maybe there's a non-exact uh, binding site, a seed match or something that could identify this association. Um, alternatively, I was wondering if you looked at the like protein interactions to see if maybe the microRNA um, didn't bind to the mRNA directly, but maybe some cofactor or something that could There cause. might be. We didn't test it. We only checked for uh, to see if we can find a uh, direct uh, interaction between them. If, we, if there wasn't any binding site, they, they wouldn't be included. But just one pair. Just so, one pair, right? Yeah. I, thought it was, I was hoping it was 10, and then you'd have 10. Oh, points, no, so. just one. Okay, thanks. Hi, great talk. Um, I just I have uh, one question to ask. Mm -hmm. So uh, can you comment on this uh, filtering step? For the last one, you predict the binding site. If you uh, filter out those uh, predicted binding site at the beginning, what will that affect your results? Sorry, what? So you have that last step filter? Yeah, we filter one pair that had. Yeah, predicted the binding site. That's yes. basically. If you it doesn't have the predicted. You binding. remove that filter at the beginning, for oh, example. Oh, okay. Yeah. Does so that how affect? Many? I have no idea. Okay. You, okay. Your question is, if we had started from the 7,500 and then looked for pairs that don't have any binding site, how many would yes. we? I have no idea. Don't okay. Know. All right. Thank you. Thank you.